Hey guys, Greg Benz here. Today I want to show you how you take an image from here to here by color grading with Blend If and the Color Balance tool in Photoshop. When I talk about color grading, I mean any creative adjustment of color in the image. So this is not about white balancing or color correcting where you're trying to get true color. This is about creative adjustment of color and it really could be anything from split toning to advanced edits to something in between like this edit here where we've gone and warmed up the sky and cooled down the foreground from this before to after. Now, before I show how to actually process this particular edit, let's jump over to another document where we can talk for a moment about how the color balance tool actually works because the way that it seems like it would work is not the way that it actually works. So I've created this black to white gradient background that we can play with with different color adjustments. Above it, I've added all the different possible adjustments we could make. So we've got a set of red adjustments here and I've broken them down into highlights, midtones, and shadows. So if we click on the highlights here, we can see that I've already gone in to the highlight section and added the maximum amount of red in the highlights with the color balance adjustment. And if we go into the midtones, I've added the maximum amount of red in the midtones. And if we go to the shadows, then I've added the maximum amount of red in the shadows there. So in looking at the way that color balance affects the image, you would think that adjustments of highlights would affect the highlights and it does and it affects it the most in the highlights here in the red but look at how much the midtones are affected look at how much the shadows are affected even down to areas that are almost black there's a very strong red gas look from before and after what color balance is doing i mean areas that are almost pure black are being adjusted so that's the first thing about the color balance tool is even though it gives you this drop down to pick shadows, midtones, and highlights, it's not giving you nearly the specificity that you think it is. And that's why we're going to need Blend If to be more targeted. There's also something else going on here that's a little bit more subtle. If we dig through the different colors here, so that's red, and at least we see more effect of the highlights in reds with the highlights, but notice that just in general, the shadows are less affected. So the highlights for red actually adjust to the shadows more than the shadows for red did. So that's kind of weird. If we jump down to green, we see the same effect. Blue, we see the same effect. Cyan, though, is the reverse. Notice that the shadows are the most adjusted of any of these, whether we're looking at the areas that are shadows, midtones, or highlights in the image, they're always more adjusted in the shadows for cyan. Looking at magenta, it's the same thing. The shadows are the most powerful adjustment, and yellow is the same thing. If we open up the color balance tool, the pattern you'll immediately recognize is highlights are most adjusted when you're pushing the sliders to the right, and they're most adjusted in the shadows when you're pushing to the left. And that's how this tool works. So it's a bit counterintuitive, but if you want to add a lot of warmth to your sky, you'd want to adjust the reds and the highlights, but the magentas and the yellows, you actually want to push them in the shadows in order to get more adjustment. And that's what we're going to do. So now that we understand a little bit more about how color balance works, let's switch back to the original document and we'll recreate this adjustment. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna delete these and we'll start from scratch. So what you wanna do is first create your color balance adjustment layer. And now you have a choice. You can begin adjusting the sliders or you can add a blend if. The choice is really yours. The problem is if you add a blend if, it's hard to know what you're going to be adjusting. And if you add the color first, it's hard to know what the color is going to look like after you add the blend if. So it's a little bit of this circular reasoning problem, but I'll show you two different ways to approach it. If you don't have Lumenzia, the way that I would do it would be to first go in and make some rough adjustment so you can see what you're adjusting. So in this case, let's go to the highlights and let's kick in a bunch of red. We obviously want to warm the skies. So we're going to add some red. We also want to add magenta and yellow. Now we could do it here in the highlights, but if we do it, we're not going to get as much adjustment as we might in the shadow area. So let's instead let's restart that. Let's go and add the red highlights, switch to the shadows and add magenta and yellow there. You get a much stronger effect in the shadows as we saw with our test document. In fact, probably too strong. Let's go ahead and dial back the magenta a little bit and it still looks really, really strong. But by the time we add the blend if it's going to dial back the effect. So at least we can understand what we're adjusting now to get to the blend if double click on the right side of the layer and you get the layer style dialog. We'll go down to the underlying layer here and we just need to bring up the black sliders until we see that we're kind of clipping as much as we can without starting to cut into the sky. 
and then split the slider. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option and then just drag this over to the right. And you really want to be pretty generous with it, moving it quite a bit. And you can see now that two things have happened. One, we're no longer adjusting most of the shadow areas, a little bit of the highlights of the sand here, but in general, we're not really adjusting this foreground. And then two, the effect in the sky has been diminished because we're feathering over this huge range. And so that's just one thing about using color balance with blend if is you're going to have to over adjust the color knowing that the blend if is going to take away some of that adjustment. But you can see that we've made this pretty nice adjustment here of the sky already. I might want to make a few little refinements to it, but it's pretty good. Now let me show you another way of creating that same result using Lomenzi. It's a little bit faster and easier. Let's delete this. We'll go ahead, create our color balance adjustment layer. We can switch over to the blend if under mode and click on something like lights. If you don't know where it is, you can click on the if button. You get this overlay to see what's being adjusted. Clicking on lights too, we can see that that's going to be the appropriate adjustment. So go ahead and click if again to get rid of that visualization. We now have our color balance layer with our blend if set to target the sky. We just need to go and add in our color. So let's go to highlights, punch up the red, go to our shadows and punch up the yellows and magentas. And so you can see we have once again made that quick adjustment using blend if and the color balance layer. Now it's a little bit stronger than we need right down here. It's a little bit too punchy and the overall effect is generic across the sky. I'd like to give it more of a feeling of radiating from the sun. An easy way to do that is going to be adding a black layer mask and then painting in with a gradient to selectively reveal this as a gradient. So let's just go and alt click on mask here or you can alt click on mask down here if you don't have Lumenzia. Switch to the gradient tool. You want to have it set from the foreground to transparent adjustment here and you can then just take it with white paint and we'll click and drag out which is going to give us this white ball here in the layer mask and so that's giving us a transition from full strength here to no adjustment out here and let's just go and bring in a little bit more here like this to give that effect a little bit stronger here I'll kick that even further and then these areas down here I want to remove that's easily done if we just switch our paint color to black and now we can continue making those gradients to remove it so we'll just go like that to knock that back and I'm going to minimize that we'll just step back by hitting the fade so edit fade and then just knock that back to the amount you need you don't want to over remove that so let's do this again and we'll do it over here as well to knock that back a little bit and I think that's a much nicer adjustment so it was just getting too saturated here but we've got this adjustment now from here to here warming up the sky we can now do the same thing for the foreground to cool it down so let's go and add a new color balance adjustment layer. Let's go and add it to the darks. We'll take a look at the if visualization. We can see we're hitting some of the sky here. It's so looking at darks two, it's a little better, but darks three has less selection of the sky. That's gonna be the best choice. And now click into the color balance layer and we can just simply add a little bit of cyan and a little bit of blue to cool that down. And I'm not worried about going into the highlights or the shadows here because it's a pretty minimal adjustment. So if I needed more of it, I can just push this way over to the side and I'll have plenty. It's only going to be these really strong adjustments like the sky where you essentially run out of room on the slider. And that's when you need to think more carefully about using shadows and highlights. Otherwise, it's easier to use the midtones because that's just what Photoshop will bring up for you. You can see we've made this nice adjustment in the foreground and I'm going to dial it back just a little bit. It's probably stronger than I need. Just a subtle adjustment of the color here. And that's usually what color grading is about. It's just subtle changes that enhance the mood of the image without necessarily giving away you know, obvious facts that they've been adjusted. Now in the sky is a different thing because we want it to be very strong, but sometimes your color adjustments are gonna be nice and subtle like the foreground here. You can apply these same blend depth techniques to just about any adjustment layer for better color grading. And lastly, to make sure you're seeing new tutorials like this in the future, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel.